Hello everybody, welcome to CS302 Online. Hope you all had a great weekend. So today we are going to be talking about AVL trees. And if we run out of things to talk about, then we can go and jump into heaps. So last week I showed you the basics of an AVL tree, which is the rotations. So let's go ahead and start by reviewing that. So there are four rotations in an AVL tree and they're basically the same, the same thing in different ways. Um, so let's just kind of start by looking at a left rotation. And so the left rotation is, well, actually let's, let's kind of, uh, let's actually bring it back and refresh it even further. So let's make sure we are on the same page on what a balanced tree versus an unbalanced tree is. So, and that's good that you're working on the CS uh, view assignment because that is, uh, that will take some time. So yeah, better not to leave it to the last minute. So good, good, good. But yeah, so a balanced tree is one where, you know, we're looking at the children, the height, you know, between the distance between that that root that node which we can consider sort of like the sub root and a leaf node on the left side and the right side so the left and right children and grandchildren and anything after that so if we are looking at that subtree and we see that the left side has a height difference greater than one then we consider that to be unbalanced if it's less than or equal to one then it's considered to be balanced so when we take that as the standard for whether something is balanced or unbalanced, then we can go ahead and apply it to our trees. And, you know, in an example, as you see here, we can see that to the right of the X, which would be, so I guess this is, this is for you, this is left and this is right. So to the right of the X, we can see that there is two uh, of height. That is because from Z to Y is one, and then from Y to X is two. So we can see two on the side, on the, on the, on the, on the right side, and then on the left side, you can see there's no children, or if we consider, you know, we're, we're considering only the letters X, Y, Z. If we consider one, two, three, four, then that would be considered one child. But if we're just saying there is uh, no children, then that would mean a height of zero. And when we see that difference, it is more than one, it's two. So therefore we consider this to be right heavy and so to wrote to to balance it we need to take some of the weight off the right and put it on the left so it's called the left rotation okay so all that is saying is just to basically show that this is what we do so we got xyz in that format and what we do is we change the root of this subtree from x to y and when we do that this is still a binary search tree, so we have to still follow the binary search property. So in this case, it's going in ascending order alphabetically. So it's impossible to see, for example, the Y as the root and then have X be on the right side and have like Z be on the left side because that would break that binary search property. So. You can use that also to uh, to verify that you're doing this right uh, in a test or something like that. Because if you do a rotation and things end out of order from binary search point of view, then you know you screwed up something, right? Now, when you're coding it, you don't have that flexibility. But I suppose when you look at the output, you can see the same thing, right? So, yeah. But anyways, uh, in this case... The only trick to the rotation here that you're looking at is if there are children, which we are going to consider the positions of one, two, three, or four, where there's, those are the positions where there could be children. However, more than likely, there will not be children in all of those positions all, every single time. In that scenario, of the, of the four children that there could be in, in here, or leaf nodes, the, uh, there's only going to be one that actually needs to be changed. So. As you can see, if there is a left child to X, that remains in the same spot, and a left and right child of Z, which are three and four, remain in the same spot. The only one that gets moved around is a child of Y, the left child of Y. In this case, 
that gets uh, its parent change from y to x. So as you can see, it goes from being a child of y to being a, a left child of y to becoming a right child of x. That is okay because think about its position in the tree. If it's on the right side of x, it must be greater than x, but it's on the left side of y, so it must be smaller than y. So the number that, or the letter that could be where two is at has to be a letter that is in between x, has to be greater than x, and then smaller than or equal to y, right? In this case, alphabetically, there isn't really much to put in there. So the only letter that really could be there is another y. But what I'm saying is that any range of values could be there depending on what x and y were. And so, so like if, the, if x and y were numbers, you know, if x was 1 and y was 10, then the number 2 would be anywhere from 2 to 10. And so because of that, when you go ahead and change the parent, from being the left, you know, having a parent as y and now having x as parent, that's okay. It will still follow the same rule because you can see that in both of these, x, you know, it's to the right of the x, which means it has to be bigger than x. It cannot be equal. But in both of them, it's to the left of the y, which means it, it's a smaller than the y or equal to the y, right? When we talked about equality, equal things go on the, on the left side of that node never on the right side. So as long as you maintain that consistency, then this works. So anyways, this is all hopefully review, but it's been a long weekend, so we'll make sure everybody's here. Uh, so anyways, the other rotations are basically the same thing in different ways. For example, right rotation is just left rotation that's just mirrored, essentially. So instead of having a, a potentially a, a right heavy tree, you have a left heavy tree, which you solve by rotating towards the light side per se so like if it's left heavy you want to rotate to the right because you want to bring some of that left weight into the right but that's not heavy so that's where that came from the double rotations they're a little bit more complicated but only in the sense that when you're performing the rotations you're performing the rotation not on the node that's unbalanced so typically on these top rotations you know when we're rotating the z it's because the Z is on balance, right? We see that the Z has one, you know, weight of two and then the other weight of zero. So if we try to do that in some scenarios, like the ones that, that require a double rotation, we will see that we don't achieve success. You know, we, we basically just kind of go from the Pac-Man shape this way to this way. And so what the double rotation is basically doing is it's fixing this issue by doing a rotation on the child and grandchild to kind of straighten that out and then do another rotation on the actual node that was originally bad to completely finish evening it out. So as you can see here, we go from Z, Y, X. So we straighten out the Y, X. By straighten out, I mean like it becomes kind of a line. So you can see how originally the, the Z, Y, X make that Pac-Man mouth. But then after that, when they become the pink line, if you here, I can point it. So here it's making this shape, right? This Pac-Man shape. So you think of this like the Pac-Man mouth eating the four, right? So what we're doing is we are straightening this part out from this into that. And once we do that, then we can just do that single rotation that we already know. In this case, the right rotation, because we're rotating to the right, and it becomes that. So this is a two-step process. Technically speaking, it is known as a left-right rotation. So it's technically one rotation, but it really is done as a, as a combination of of two rotations. It's essentially doing a left rotation on the child and grandchild and then a right rotation on the actual original node with the other two nodes, okay? Uh, typically, this is done when you try to do a single rotation and fail on this node, so then you work there, okay? But sometimes can be a little bit harder to like know ahead of time. You just kind of just have to try the single one first and if that doesn't work, then you do it again. Because one of the things I said is, if you have something, um, a certain tree, and you perform a rotation on any of the nodes, and you get a different tree, if you do that same rotation again, like you do a left rotation twice, you're going to end up back with the original tree. So it's like a circular thing. So that's a good thing for us, because if a rotation fails, we can just run the same rotation again to go back to how we started originally. And then we can go ahead and tie a double rotation.
So, yeah, that's just a good thing to know. And then, of course, the left right rotation versus the right left rotation. This is just the way the Pac Man mouth is looking at, you know, whether it is looking this way or in this case, it is looking this way. So, yeah, as you can see, they're all the same thing, just, you know, mirror version of that, or whether you're doing it on the node or the child node. Um, and that's it. So, as long as you understand that, it might be good to also see this as a reference, especially because. You know, you keep track of what's happening with the child nodes. Again, you only really change the location of one of the nodes of the one of the child nodes when you're doing a rotation. So in the case of a double rotation, I suppose in theory there, um, two of the nodes are going to have changed, you know, parents, but in the worst case scenario, because of each rotation changing one of them. So I think in this case, if we look at that, that is going to be, for example, X is going to lose both its kids. Oh, ah, I, well, they're really gone for now. Okay, there we go. So X, these two are going to lose. You know, in the, in the first rotation, it's going to lose the two to the Y, and in the second rotation, it's going to lose the three to the Z. So you can see how the how it loses those two, and then Y still has its one, and actually Z. Uh, has its four still, yeah. So Z still has its four, and Y still has its one. So yes, two are two remain, two change. So again, always the case that a rotation will take will, will potentially uh, change a children's parent, and it's defined which of those children is always going to be. And with a double rotation, it's two two children, and it's not be random. It's because there's two rotations, each one getting rid of one of them. So not rid, but change. They're being readopted essentially. Okay. Any questions on the rotations? Now, I want to make sure that you guys understand these rotations because you are going to be coding them. So, if you don't get them, then that's kind of bad, you know. So, yes, questions, comments, concerns. Okay. So, now what i really want to do is just do more practice of actually using these when i'm inserting and stuff and then maybe just spend the rest of the class on that and if we just really just run out or bored of this then we jump on heaps instead uh, and then two heaps otherwise we'll just do heaps, heaps on wednesday so yes well yes we are going to do more examples but i just want to make sure that like the con the concept of like the the rotations and everything is down i guess as we do examples, this will kind of come. So, okay. So, uh, first of all, last time we did the Anakin example. So, why don't we pick up from there? Or should we just... No, nah, actually, we'll start a new one. Let's do Obi-Wan now, actually. Since we did Anakin, it just makes sense, right? So, this is a glitch stop. Okay. We'll probably add more to this in Obi Wan, but because uh, because my goal, I don't really know what combination of letters would create a double rotation, but I'm pretty sure that given enough things that we try, we're gonna run into it. Uh, alternatively, I do know that that example from last year worked out. So, like I said already, you can check those videos out to see more examples. But okay, let's just go ahead and do that. And also the other part I want to show you is not just inserting, but also deleting technically. They're they both the same thing, but I suppose that it's good to see both of them being done. You just want to make sure you code your four functions. Essentially, actually, if you're really fancy, when you're coding your rotations, you can code one rotation function and then other functions that are just kind of calling that rotation function, you know, like you call the mirror function and the rotation. Uh, or you can just make your life easy and code four functions that copy and paste a lot of the rotation code. doesn't really matter. But uh, essentially, that's the hard part of the ABL assignment is the, is the rotation functions. Other than that, inserting into a tree is trivial with binary search. Um, you just basically check whether the node is greater than or smaller. And I think I might have shown you some code for that already. So that's the only really hard part here. And then I guess measuring the heights too, which you want to do recursively just to make your life easy, frankly. So anyway, okay. So we this is what we want to insert and uh, we are going to do it for a, we're doing a binary search tree. 
Actually, let's do a normal binary search tree and then we're going to do a binary, an AVL binary search tree. So this is a normal binary search tree. You know, I'll do that really, really fast. We're going to waste time on it. So we started with the O, then the B is smaller than the O. So it goes on the left. The I is greater than the, the B, but smaller than the O. So that would go here. The W is greater than the O. So that's going to go there. The A is going to go here. And then the N is going to go to the, it, it's smaller than the O, but it's bigger than the I, right? So the, here. This is actually pretty balanced. It's not that bad. Um, even if it wasn't a, you know, this is not an ABL tree, but interestingly enough, when we compute the height of this, it's not that unbalanced. It's like three. I mean, yes, there is an unbalance because it's three one here. But other than that, like it actually turned out to be pretty decent, which means that there's probably not going to be that much rotation going on. But that's OK. That's OK. All right. So that was, would be if it was just a binary search three. You just insert it and you're good to go. In the worst case scenario here to check for something like let's check for the letter um, N, I suppose, it would be to check all the way here. So that would be four checks that you have to do, which is still pretty much almost to that log of N for the height. So anyways, let's go ahead and do the same thing, but with an ABL tree. The beginning is going to look very similar until we actually have a rotation, which will probably only happen after we insert like that N. So, or yeah, we'll, the dub, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so we start out with the O the same way. Then we put the B, then you put the I, that, there we go, is actually already creating something that we need to balance. Yeah, so because this is zero, zero, this is one, zero, and this is two, zero. So there we already have our first issue actually. And again, with, with ABL trees, you want to rotate and fix errors, uh, well not errors, but fix unbalances as they come along. You don't wait until you finish inserting, which is the strategy that you do for things like a heap, where you, you know, you heapify the thing after everything is put in the tree. In, in ABLs, it doesn't work like that. It, 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 you, it, and then you might be asking as to like, why? It turns out that it is faster and more efficient to balance as you go, then to try to insert everything and then balance it at once. Uh, people have done tests on this. It just it just works out better that way because think about it. When you're inserting, if the height of the current tree that you're inserting is balanced, then it's log n to find out where to insert. And if you're inserting n of the items, then each of them is taking log n time, then it's going to be n times log n. What are we not putting in here? Well, we're not putting in here the potential rotations required to balance a tree between each of them. I will claim that these rotation times are irrelevant compared to this number here. So ultimately, the time it takes for you to insert and create your AVL tree is approximately under the n log n time, approximately, okay? Furthermore, we know that a, with a binary search tree, the in-order traversal gives you the sorted list of items. How long does a traversal take? It's, it takes n time to do the traversal because you're just walking the tree in a certain way. So really, if we're trying to use uh, ABL tree to sort, it's approximately, again, n log n. Again, this n is quite insignificant compared to the n log n. So that's why using this system as a sort, goes back to that n log n ideal that we saw with things like merge sort. Not quick sort technically, although the theta of quick sort is n log n, but the big O is O squared. This, the big O is n log n. So this is really like merge sort in that sense, okay? So um, a bit of an aside, but if we were to insert everything at once and then try to balance it, okay, the balancing is not too bad, again, that's insignificant, but here's the thing. If we are inserting something that is in the shape of a degenerate tree, then every time that we're inserting something, it's n height, and we're inserting n of those. So that kind of reaches more of like n squared just to insert into the tree, 
plus the, ro the rotations to balance after everything is inserted, which yes, it's insignificant. It's a little bit more than here, but still insignificant compared to this. So at the end of the day, if we then do a traversal of that, it's about that, which again, this is insignificant. So it goes back to n squared. So that is why you want to balance as you go so that you can take advantage of that balance as you keep inserting more and more items in it. So this is not the best example of that because if we inserted everything and then and then did a single rotation to balance this tree, then that, that would have been okay and uh, would have been faster. But in a general case, this doesn't always follow of like, you know, we would have done less rotations if we inserted at once everything together kind of thing. So, yeah. Okay. Anyways. Um, okay. So we got the situation. Actually, this is cool because uh, this is, this is an example. We are going to need a double rotation. So, um, but it's a simple one. I, don't, I like the ones where there's more nodes involved because we got to think about the children. So let's attempt to do the single rotation first. It's a left heavy tree. You know, the scales are tipping to this side. So we want to rotate that way. That is going towards the right. So we need to do a right rotation. Okay, a right rotation is the one that goes from this to this. However, this is going to cause an issue because when we do that rotation, B is going to become the root node and then O is going to basically be the child of that and then I is going to be the left child of O. So we will basically end up with the same tree or same different tree, but the same problem, which is an unbalanced tree that now is just right heavy instead of left heavy. So we go ahead and perform another single rotation again, and we end up with the original one because I failed. Okay, so not very interesting to show that. So going back to this, now we'll show a proper double rotation that will fix this issue. So how are we going to do the double rotation? What I recommend you do with this is, first of all, let's just ignore the, the dash O part. Let's just, we're strictly looking at the BI right now. Okay, so just ignore this top part for now. Whatever we do, we'll eventually hook up to this stick right there, okay? So, looking at this part of the tree, that's all we're looking at right now. Add in a temporary node, just an imaginary node that we're just gonna call, don't get confused by putting in a letter. So we're just gonna, we're gonna make it a, a little circle, okay? A bullet point kind of thing, okay? So why? Because that, that would just looks more like a normal rotation, like more natural. You know, it's got that X, Y, Z format that we're aware of. Let me, uh, let me copy and paste that to the side just so you can see it. So that looks more like this now, if we add that imaginary node, okay? And it's okay to add the imaginary node. It's not gonna, it's actually gonna, not gonna help us. We'll get, we'll throw it away at the end, no worries. Just like we could actually add imaginary children's one, two, three, and four, just so we could keep track of them. But there's no children, so not to worry too much about that. Okay, so now that we have that imaginary node, hopefully it's, it's clear to you that this will become that. Because this imaginary node is to the right of the eye, it means it's greater than the eye. So that, still follows essentially here okay so that's pretty much this rotation so going back to whatever this was connected to remember what was this whole b thing connected to that one stick that goes to the o right well that's exactly what we want to put it back in so once we finish the rotation yes we we go ahead and we just kind of erase the imaginary node so that's why i didn't copy it here under the i but if we go back to this let me uh copy this down if we go back to what we had originally, we go ahead and we add the updated result, which is basically that. So it's not quite to scale, but uh, that's what we end up with. Okay. So that's the first of the two rotations because it's double rotation. So now this one's also now a little, we don't even need an imaginary node for this one. This one's pretty obvious as to how it's going to happen because this is just going to become I, B, O. And there you go. That pretty much solves that one. This one is considered also a right rotation. So uh, what was the top one? That was technically a, that was a left rotation actually. Yeah, this was a left rotation and this was a right rotation. I didn't even said their left rotation. I don't know if I said that right or not. There it was, okay. 
All right. So uh, that was a lot for very little, really. But that's okay. So we got Obi-Wan. Then we've inserted the first three letters of that. And our current tree is this. And after you do your rotations, make sure you recompute your heights. So this is literally something you want to actually like put into your node. So I showed you how to do the nodes earlier, like two weeks ago or whatever. Add two local variables to that class. Two class variables. Call them like left height and right height. Just keep those in your in each node so that you don't have to recompute them every single time. You know, it's a little bit of concept of dynamic programming in the sense that uh, dynamic programming is where you remember the work you've done already, so you don't do it again. There's this concept of memory. So when you when you compute something, you want to remember it so you don't compute the same value twice and waste time doing that. And one of the ways you can do that here is by remembering what the height was. Of course, you want to update the height if it changes because of a rotation, but unless that happens, then you you can still use the older one. So uh, it's a good approach to do that instead of having a function call that actually recurses to the tree all the way to the roots, to, f to the leaves, to find out the heights every single time. It just becomes very inefficient, slows the computer down. So yeah. Anyways, let's insert a W. So the, where's the W going to go? W is going to be going to the furthest right of this thing possible. So down here. Now, when we do that, we got to recompute the height of any node from that node that you just inserted all the way to the root. So anything in that path, you recompute heights off. You don't need to mess with this side because it, it didn't mess that side at all. So you don't really compute the height of that. So in this case, this changes from zero to one, and then this changes from one to two. So those are the ones that you have to recompute, the height of O and the height of I. Those are the paths from W to the root. You don't need to recompute the height of B I hope it's a little obvious as to the Y. Again, that doesn't touch W at all. Like, W did not affect that letter. It's not a descendant of that letter. They have they share a common ancestor, which is I, but B is, you know, not a descendant of that. They're like distant cousins or something. So, anyways. Let's throw in the A now. So, same, same thing here, but in the other side. So, A goes here. And so you want to recompute the height of B and I, but not of O and W. So B becomes a 1 and I becomes a 2. So you recompute those heights, but you don't need to touch any of these heights. So, yes. Finally, we get the N. So the N is going to go uh, to the right of the I, but to the left of the O. So you have to do those checks. And it goes here, and then you need to recompute the height of the O, not the W, just the O. And then that technically you recompute this height, but you see that uh, it doesn't change because you still pick the highest. It was not the highest number in O, but even if you don't actually add code to actually check for that, you would see that it would still be okay. You still got to take the biggest of the two. So that is the final result. Now let me add more letters to this so that we can see interesting things happen here. So I think it'll be interesting if we add um, I think we want to make maybe a node here. Let's add a couple of nodes there. I think that'll make it a little interesting. Okay. So anything after I but less than N, so really we're limited to J, K, L, M. So how about we insert the words? I was trying to think of some actual phrase that could work out here. Um, oh, well, Obi-Wan Kenobi, so that actually works out with the K. Obi-Wan K and then... Yeah, we can, we can put in the E from Kenobi. Yeah, okay, so we'll put Obi-Wan Ken for now, okay? So let's do that. So if we do that, so we're going to insert the K. So the K is going to actually go, you know, after the I, before the O, before the N. So the K goes here. Let me rewrite this so that it looks more more balanced. Hold on. So N, K. So I was trying to keep it leveled properly so it looks more right. Um, so yeah, okay, so we insert the K, so we recompute the heights.
technically, it's still a balanced tree as it is now. It doesn't look quite balanced to me, but it's not what the looks, looks can be deceiving, I suppose. It's about what it is. And there's no height difference greater than one, any of these. So it's okay. So now, let us insert the E. So the E is smaller than the I, but it's greater than the B. So E goes here. This becomes a one. This stays still as a two. Okay, and now we're gonna insert the other N. So this is where uh, it'll get a little interesting. So for the other N, it's bigger than the I, smaller than the O, you get to this N, and then we said duplicates go to the left, right? So we go to the left of the N, but we find the K. So N is greater than K, so N actually gets inserted here. Okay? Now this will require some balancing for sure. So first of all, this becomes a one. This becomes a two. You don't even compute the O yet. At the moment you see something on balance, you gotta fix it then. And so it, it turns out this actually had again a double rotation, right? Because if we try to do the single rotation, it's just gonna end up with uh ooh, that's that's a weird one. It will it would end up with a K. Actually, will it be a double rotation? Yeah, it would, but that just feels weird how the end went to the right of that. But that's technically okay. That's just, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird, but it's, it's okay. Yep, okay. All right, sorry. I, I, I had to think about that. So I re just remember that when I show you deletes, I need to show you how to actually replace the deletes. So we'll go back to this in a second too. Okay, this is actually a good example. So um, anyways, the end goes there and then that's strange I, for this one i i want to copy because i what i'm what it's intuitively trying to tell me to do here oh no no i remember now why i was doing this weird it's because the root the root becomes a k that's what it is the root becomes a k and then we get an n here and an n here yes that's what the rotation would do if uh if we do this slowly so you can see that um you can imagine the following nk imaginary with an n there and so what is happening here is k imaginary n and then the k's children gets transferred here so that's how we're getting the above here okay of course this doesn't do anything to us because once we get rid of this imaginary node we still unbalance so we can do a rotation again and then we end up back with where we started so yes Okay, so we know that the single rotation failed, so instead we do a rotation on this only. So for that, we go ahead and we add that imaginary node just so that it's easier to see that this should become that. And that's exactly what it is. So let's just go ahead and actually delete that and replace it with this. Okay, so once we do that, it's still unbalanced. However, we're closer to the solution because now all we got to do is do a, that regular uh, right rotation, which will make this end. So this end is this end. And then the other end is this one. And then this is a K. So essentially, obviously in the test, you would not erase things. I'm erasing them here just for space reasons, but you would want to leave in a test like this. Like you would leave that and then redraw the tree yourself manually. Okay, in fact, maybe I'll leave, maybe we'll do that one time. Just to um, kind of give you an example of how I'd want to see that on a test. So you would leave that and then you would redraw the tree with it placed in the right spot and the heights recomputed like such. Oh, hold on. I already raised too little. There we go. Like that. Okay. So that's kind of what I would want to see happen on the test. You could even circle it. it might make it a little clearer. 
Yeah, okay. So uh, once you do this, of course, make sure you put your heights down. And we can see that the tree is actually balanced. It's back to being balanced. So yes, that worked out better than I actually I was expecting. So, um, okay. Before we go any further, I would like to, um, I would like to talk about deleting nodes because that is also something tricky, okay? So let's leave ABLs for a side and go back to a regular tree. So in a regular tree, let me just go ahead and give you an example. So let's say we have 10, five, and yes, I switched to numbers just because I want you to not focus on just letters. Uh, and then we have maybe like an eight, seven, two, and then maybe like 12, 20, okay? So, 21. If I wanna delete a node, what do I replace it with? So, okay, let's start with the basic examples of this. Suppose that in this example here, I would want it to delete the node 20. So what do I do is, first of all, I look for it. So I, I will like delete 20 is the command that I send this. It goes to the 10 and it looks at the 10 and says, you know, what is the size of 20 in relation to 10? It's bigger than that, so it should check to the right side. Then it sees the 15, it says, 15 is bigger than 20 so it goes here it sees it's equal it's like oh checkmate i found the the number i'm trying to delete so let's go ahead and delete it so how does it delete it well it just deletes it but here's the issue if we were deleting a leaf node like let's say we were deleting 12 then all we really got to do is just delete it and we're good to go but in the scenario of the uh of the 20 it has a child and we can't leave that child orphaned. Like we can't just do this and be like, oh, well, you're gone. You know, you go a lot, you go down with your, with your, with your, with your, uh, with your, with your dad there. No, what we do is we have to give that child to another node that is currently existing. Now in this scenario here, it's trivial because all we got to do is just kind of link this up and now we're done. So we basically just make the 21 be the right child of the 15. That's an easy solution to that one. Other ones are not as trivial. So for example, let's say that we are deleting the, um, let's say that we're deleting in this one, the 15, okay? So we wanna delete the 15 now. If we wanna delete the 15, we have two children. So when we only have one children, it's not a problem. We just make that child be the new parent. You know, he has taken place. He has taken his place. But in this case, we have sort of a competition. Like, who do we make the parent? Do we take the left one or do we take the right one? And so in this scenario, both of them will work technically. Um, but you typically want to pick the left one. Okay. So pick the 12 in this case, if we leave the 15. However, let's make it even more complicated. Suppose that you want to delete the 10. What do you replace it with? If you pick the left one, as I said before, that would be the two. That's the leftmost. That would break the binary search capabilities of this tree. For this, it turns out that you want to pick still on the left subtree for a number so you're still gonna your candidates that you want to pick are around here so the left of it is yes correct but not the left most you want to find the left candidate and then go to the right most of those candidates so left of that but then when you get here you want to go to the right most of that and by that i'm saying that if you think about traversals it's going to be the predecessor of the in-order traversal of that number. So it would be known as the predecessor in the in-order traversal. So if we were doing that in-order traversal for this, 
you would see that it would be basically the two would come in first, then the five, then the seven, then the eight, then the 10, then the 12, then the 21, right? That's why uh, a binary search tree in order traversal will give you a sorted list. So basically, we're looking for the biggest number that goes before this one. We will find it on the left subtree, but then the rightmost of that. And that's why it's the eight. And it's a little bit misleading here because, you know, yes, this is right, but then this goes left. So it might seem like you might want to go for the seven, but no, you want to go for the eight because that's the most right on the left subtree. Okay. But when in doubt, just do the in order traversal and then the predecessor of whatever you're trying to delete is what you're, is what you need to replace it with, which again would be also the eight. Now, if there was a nine in here, it would have to be located there. In which case, this would be even further more right than the eight, which means that you would go ahead and pick that. So again, I'm not changing my rules of how I replace the 12. I'm still going to the left sub subtree, but once I go to the left, if there's only one thing, yeah, sure, take that. But if there's more than one, then I wanna go to the furthest right of that, which of course is the eight or the nine if the nine existed, but the nine was not here. Okay, so that's literally what I do. However, that causes issues of its own, right? Because the eight had childs. So what do you do there? Well, you do the same algorithm. So it's, this is recursion going on right now. So you got you so to re, so replace the eight that you then use to replace the root. What you're going to do with that with the with the children of that is, if there's one child, easy, just replace it with that child. If there's two chi children, then take the left child. If there, if that child has no grandchildren per se, no children of its own, if it has more than, if it has children, then you're going to go to take the right most of those, you know, of those most of whatever that subtree is. So that's the algorithm for replacing. So, um, again, let's say I wanted to delete the eight. What would I replace it with? I would replace it with the seven. Okay. Let's say I want to delete the seven. Now, what would I replace it with? Well, you go to the left of that and then the rightmost. There's no more rightmost, so you'd actually replace it with the five. And the reason we have to be careful with picking that is because we don't want to break again the binary search property. Okay. So again, if we let's say we want to delete the um, well, this are all I mean the only hard one here now is deleting. Let's say, let's say we want to delete the two. And the two just kind of goes away. But if we want to delete the five, then we replace it with the two. Okay, so any questions about how to replace things when we delete with a normal binary search tree? The ABL tree is just going to be the same thing, except we got to check for a balance after we do the replacement. So that's why I wanted to show you first this way before going back to ABL. Uh, I noticed that you add the imaginary node to the right. Should we always add it on that side? You should add it in whatever side is convenient for you. It's an imaginary node at the end of the day. So the whole point of the node is that it's supposed to make your life easy. So if you're doing what typically happens is if you have something, if you have something of this format, you know, the imaginary node is added here to the, I suppose, right side. But if you have something of this format, then the imaginary node would be added here. So again, add it wherever, See, the whole point of adding it is just so that the algorithm looks easier to do. You don't actually have to add them. Like I would, I would actually never add the imaginary nodes when I'm actually like solving this. Like if I'm trying to come up with examples for like a test or something. But the reason I show you that is because it's a good starting point where you get familiar with it. And then you just kind of just sort of leave that behind. It's like, this, those are like the training wheels in your bicycle kind of thing. Okay. So uh, it, just add it wherever it helps so that it fits more the predefined shapes of the rotations that I showed you. So like, you know, these things. So it fits these, add notes as needed. Just add as many notes as you want, wherever you want. Just make sure you remove them afterwards. So uh, yes, hopefully that kind of answers what you're asking. So anyways, going back to our Obi-Wan example, let's, uh, let us delete um what do i want to delete that will be interesting i think i had to add one more letter before before deleting anything just so that it's more interesting so 
let us add Kenobi. So the full Kenobi to this. Okay. Yeah. So let us insert the O. So where's that O going to go? It's actually going to go all the way down here. Okay. Yeah, this would be cool that we added this. And so the tree is going to get unbalanced. Right. Actually, actually, yeah, right here. Not there, but here. Okay, so it's on balance now here. So I like this. I like the fact that it's on balance there. This might actually require a little rotation. So, uh, yeah, okay. So we got to balance it. Let me, let me copy it beneath this. And let's get going on that. Okay, so it's left heavy so by default we're going to try a right rotation and just kind of see what happens i mean if we learn anything the last the end of the last class was that i thought it was a double rotation it was just single rotation so that might be the case here too i don't know we'll find out only one way to find out there's no easy way to predict these things you just kind of have to let it happen especially in code because like here you can visualize it and see like oh okay it looks like a single rotation or it looks like a double but when it's in code and it's part of a massive tree, there's no uh, easy way to visualize that. So you lose that sort of uh, ability. So, yes, puppy. Okay, so in this case, the rotation notes are these three notes. That's for X, Y, and Z, okay? So there's actually no need for imaginary notes on this one. You can still make children, like temporary children be your imaginary notes if you want it. But uh, that's a little bit too much. Okay, so there's our rule set of the right rotation that we're going to do. And now we're going to do it. So we can see that the Y is the N. So that's going to become the new root. Okay, so for a second here, let's, uh, let's take this part of the tree away. So we'll leave that here for later. Whatever we finish rotating, whatever the new root is, is going to go there, okay? But we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so from here, with this subtree, what we want to do is we want to make N, O, K. All right, that's, that's where that's going to end. Now we just got to worry about moving the children to the right spots. So as we can see there, again, there's only one child that should be replaced, and that is a child of the Y which in this case is the N. So in this case, this child here is going to be readopted from the N is going to move to the right of the Z, which is the O. So it's actually gonna go end up here, but on this side. So you'd actually put it like that and then get rid of the stick and put it this way, okay? Now notice that even though it's one child, I moved two things, that's okay. Actually, that was one of the, I was, I was, I'm happy about that because it kind of really shows you the power of the tablet. So, yes, only one child is readopted. But if that child has an entire tree of its own beneath it, like, an, you know, children and grandchildren and everything after that, that gets moved along. So the whole tree gets readopted, so the whole subtree, okay? So in this case, you know, what we did is we took something from here and put it here. And then that had a children of its own, so they just tagged along and stayed in the same spot. And as you can see, it doesn't break the uh, the, the binary search tree property because we did this right. Okay, um, the the other children stay in the same spot, which in this case is just one of them. So th this is just going to go here. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let me. Uh, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to rewrite the trees now here. The 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 notes just so that we know what we started with and what we ended up with, okay? So we started up with the left one and we ended up with the right one. This is good because I think this, this, this is, I, I can already see that this is not fixed very good. Well, we'll confirm that in a second here. So let's go ahead and confirm that by recomputing the heights and see if this subtree is now fixed. Before three, one, now let's see what it's at. So this is two, one, this is zero, zero, and then this is one, three, so yeah. Perfect. So this is a scenario where we actually need a double rotation because as you can see, 
we ended up with a 1-3. Different route, but still the same on balance just on the other side. Okay, so let's actually rotate it back. So we know that it's going to end up that way, but I actually want to show you that because it's more practice. So, you know, we're like, oh, snap, this didn't work. Now we're ended up with this. Um, so what we need to do is basically do the same rotation to get back to what we started. So to do that, we are going to let me uh, get rid of this color here. We're going to do a rotation on these three nodes, right? That single rotation. So that's going to end up like O and W. And then we just got to move the children to the right spots. So this children stays in the same spot. And then this gets readopted from here. Here, I guess I'll, let me pull up the algorithm so you can see that. So as you can see, that gets readopted to the right side of the K. So that's going to end up here. See that? Which is, I believe, wait, is that? Yeah. Oh, no, hold on. I'm putting it in the wrong spot. It's actually, to the, this is already, K is a child. So O is the node, so it actually goes there, okay? Because the ones that we're rotating in are these ones, not the K. The K is just a child, so that just stays there. So as you can see, when we do that, we do indeed end up with what we started originally with, which is somewhere here. I hope we didn't lose that. I think it was this one, yeah. If we copy this down and we compare it with this, we can see that they are indeed identical. So after performing that double rotation twice, we end up back to where we started. So that's good. We undid the bad things that the single rotation failed, you know, failed us on. Okay. So the, uh, the single rotations have failed us. So we're going to now instead do a double rotation. Okay. So right in the past, we were doing a rotation on these three nodes. The problem is what we need to do is we need to straighten this part. So we need to straighten that. So right now from this, we need to make it a straight line. So we need to rotate those ends from sort of this shape into this shape. So in this case, we actually don't need an imaginary node for that because we have the child O to kind of actually be that node. So really the rotation we're gonna do is gonna be here. Okay, because the goal is to flip the ends from you know, sliding this way to sliding this way. Okay, so let us just look at that section of the tree for now. And K is just gonna be a, ch a child. So what this is going to end up looking like is going to be like this, N, N, and then O here. And just so we clarify which N is what, this N is this N, okay? And so because of that, the other end still has a child. So let's go ahead and put the child there like that. Okay. So when we do that, we put it back in here as it was. So now we straighten the ends so we can perform the rotation on these three now. And we will see that now this will not cause problems as before. Okay. So let us perform rotation on that. So let us take this out.
and then rotate it. So that's going to be the, the highlighted one, the green one, or I guess it became like a gray now when we highlight it with the two colors, but that's going to be the root node. And then we're going to get the O and the N over there. And then we're just going to move the children to the right spots. So the K is going to stay in the same spot as the same child. And the W is going to stay in the same spot as the same child. The only one that gets readopted is this one, which gets put here. Okay. Again, that's coming from the, uh, from the right rotation. As you can see here. See the three gets readopted to the left of that, which is exactly what we did here. Okay. So when we do that, if we put it back in the original tree or the remainder of the tree, I mean, which is this thing up here, then we can see that now that is balanced, at least to that part is, which was the end. So zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero zero one one two okay and then if we go up to the three or to sorry to the eye we can see that's a three so the entire tree is currently balanced as it is now actually so this is a balanced tree doesn't look quite balanced but it is okay let me just redraw it so it looks prettier and then a E N O K O W. Okay, so there we go. That looks a little bit nicer. So uh, yeah, we uh, we're almost done inserting Obi Wan Kenobi to this tree. But before I go further, let me see if I want to delete any notes to show you stuff. I might want to delete uh, I'm trying to think I'm uh, okay let's try to delete the eye the root that's usually the hardest thing to delete in these trees let's try to delete the eye before we insert further I mean we might still continue with this root with the, I mean with this tree but I kind of want to see that happen See if anything interesting goes down with that. So we'll leave that here so we continue later on, but let's try to delete the eye. So in this case, we inserted all of that, and now we want to delete eye. So uh, this is going to be fun to code. Yes, yes, it will be fun to code indeed. I mean, yeah, lots of sec faults in your future, I see. So no, not no way to really avoid that. You just kind of have to uh, get through it. So best of luck, though. Okay, so um, yeah, we're gonna delete the eye. We're gonna replace it with that uh, predecessor in the in-order traversal, which is the left rightmost. So that would be the E. I actually, I don't even think that's going to require rebalancing. <laughs> um, this is all the way, this is currently 2, 2 here, right? Zero, zeros, ones, yeah. And then here we got 2, 0, 1, 2. So actually, yeah, this did not require any rebalancing. I didn't think about that, actually. But um, let's delete the E now. That will require rebalancing. Because now it's going to be replaced by the B. So now this is one. And that's a three. So that is definitely an unbalanced tree right there. If there's an unbalanced tree, then that's definitely it. Okay. So let us attempt to fix this. B and O is what we want to rotate. So we want to make N be O like that. And then move all the children to the right spots. So essentially that means moving this child here. It stays in the same place. 
and then these two children here these two children stay in the same spots the only one that gets moved is this subtree here with the K and an N. It moves from being a left child of the N to being a right child of the B, like such. And the K tags along again. So that actually was not as painful as I thought it would be. Two two three there we go one one and then two so yeah that balances the tree look how different the tree became like from like what we had before to this like it just got reshifted all over the place but it's still correct it still follows binary search like if you're looking for the end you will find the end there and if you're looking for another end then um, you would you would keep searching you know after you find the first one and if you reach leaf then that means there's no more no more okay so anyways going back to this one this so we're going back to the one before we deleted stuff i kind of want to just complete kenobi because it's cool so let's just enter the rest of these so we got two letters left so that b is going to go here it just has to be there so if we do that i don't think that the way the weights get messed up so zero one two so this is two two this is three so here we got zero one this is two one which is okay and then this is three so yes and then oh uh, will we be okay with the eye yes we will be okay with the eye Oof, okay that's good so we won't need to do any rebalancing not that i don't want to but I'm kind of tired of doing it at this point so the e would go here Okay, so yay, we inserted only one Kenobi. So, yes, hello there. All right. So, you've seen insert, you've seen delete. Is there anything else that I want to show you with this stuff? Uh, I'm looking online and seeing if there's anything I want to point out. I pointed out the time complexity stuff. That's important to talk about. Um, if you go on Geeks for Geeks, they have some pseudo algorithms that you can kind of get some hints on on how to implement this. It's not a lot of code, it's just complicated code. And by complicated, it's not even like hard code. It's just like you got to keep things straight, otherwise you suck fault, essentially. <laughs> so, yeah. There is a really cool visualization tool. I will go to post it again here. Um, I don't want to show that on stream because of copyright and whatnot. Otherwise, if we were in classroom, I'd show it. But uh, that is cool because you can ask it to insert things and delete things. And it, 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 it shows you the animations happening. So yeah, you can see the tree spinning. Like when you reroute the tree, you can see it going from like this to like this. Like you can see that happening. That's pretty cool. So if you want to see more examples, throw in numbers into that, into that uh, simulator. And uh, you get to see... Uh, you get to see how how the tree gets made, like as as you put things in, and how it traverses and everything. It's really really cool. In fact, that whole website is very cool. If you go, if you click on the bottom left, algorithm visualizations, they have a lot of algorithms like that. And so visualizing these things help a long way. Okay, so uh, I I encourage you to 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 play around with the website, especially when you're doing the assignment. If you want to verify. You know, if you're still rusty on, on AVLs and you don't want to do it by hand and you want to verify with this, you can probably do it that way so you can see if you're getting the right values, okay? But I, I strongly recommend you to manually make the AVL trees really small as you're coding it instead of trying to throw in the entire SID fleet. And like, that will be impossible to figure out whether it's good or bad. Like, it's just, ah, no. Just like, put in like five ships and... That's it. And then like hard code that or something like the, the ships, the ships. So you can see the rotations working. Then when, when it's working for that subset, then throw in the 4,000 ships or I don't know how many they are. So that's my, my tip or recommendation for doing that. Usually you don't want to, you don't want to try and uh, 
jump right into the big problem. Solve it with a small problem first, proof of concept, then expand. Okay, so um, that concludes ABL trees. So we still got 10 minutes. So I, I am going to actually take advantage of that and start talking about heaps. So uh, unless you guys have any questions on ABL trees. Can we do a quick visual example of what the functions in assignment seven do? Uh, assignment seven is the one where you're building the tree from the uh, from the traversals, right? So really, you're doing just two functions, I believe. That's the get get uh, make the tree from the in and pre in order and pre order, and then from the post and in or in and post. I don't know how the, I put them. So. You, what you want to do is you want to do the algorithm that I showed you like a week ago or some, sometime, I don't remember, where you're building it from the tree, from the, from the, from the, from the traversals. So like that, that one. So that's what you want to, uh, that's what you want to do from those, I think. Was it this one? Yeah, from like these, the one with the Rick roll. So that's what you want to do so what you do is you feed it into two arrays as parameters i believe that's what i put it as, as a function parameters and then you you basically just you if you, you can do this recursive or iteratively that's up to you but uh, you want to traverse the pre-order from one direction to the other so like from the left to the right or if it was a post you go from right to left like that and then to find out what to insert you locate that node from the in order and then you can go ahead and pick of those nodes that they are like left childs of a node and then right childs of that node and then if i said as an example you can make it a vector or you can then pick which of the nodes you got to put there by seeing what the next node is in the pre-order so of the list that you have there the next node that is actually going to be the real child not like grandchild or whatever is the next node so for example here you got nv so n's the root and v is a child of n this is the left child or right child well you see that v is located on the left side of n therefore it is going to be the left child of that so you put v there then you see that there's an underscore that's going to be the child of v it's the left or right it's to the left of the v so it's the left child of that so now you got n v underscore and that's pretty much what you do. So, yeah, I believe it's just those two functions you got to build. I can't remember if there's more. Um, that's why the, the two assignments are kind of just the same assignment, but, you know, part one and part two. So, uh, yeah, if there's more in specific than, than that, then let me know if there's something you want me to talk about. So, anyways, um, ten minutes, five minutes. We can still talk a little bit about heaps, at least conceptually what a heap is. So, heaps. I have any, any notes on this that I wanna just paste first of all. Uh, I guess heaps was the, I, I, I guess I was, I was confused. Heaps is the first video that, I, that we went remote last semester, so while I was putting videos before on YouTube that I was just like screen capturing my iPad, that's the first one where I was using this setting where I was like video of me and the chat. Well, the chat might have not been like there yet, but you know, it was this system. So that's the first time that I really saw that. So um, that's good now because you can also see those videos too. And like, they're more like these kinds where like me. Are you gonna do a VR lecture this time around? I, I was thinking about it, but I don't know what the topic would be that would be interesting for it. Like, I was actually thinking of doing it with the tree stuff, but they don't don't have an application that would be cool where I could see. I would want to, if I could do one where I could grab the nodes and move them physically in the, in the VR, then that would be cool. I went on Unity and tried to do that some time ago. And I could not get a library that would like actually do that easily without like reinventing the wheel. And I was like, I'm not gonna spend too long on this. So I can check Unity again. 
But that's the only thing that I could think of that would be cool to see. Because like drawing in, in VR is cool. You can see stuff, but this is all 2D right now. So there's no uh, there's no advantage to being in VR. Even the hash one was cool in VR, but it wasn't really necessary to be in VR. The only time that I'd seen taking advantage of VR being useful was when I did the machine learning lectures and I was talking about kernel functions and uh, like multi-dimensional spaces because then like like increasing the dimensionality of something to make it linearly separable, that was like meant to be in 3D. So like VR was beautiful for that. That's the one time that I was like, yeah, okay, VR worked out really well. So I don't know. I could do it for the for the, for the, for the, for the lols, but uh, I, wa I wanted to have a, a benefit, not just throw VR for fun. Do I have a video of that lecture? I do. I do have it on on the on the Spring 302. I did that one for. Uh... Well, which one are you talking about? Actually, they were both in Spring. the The hash one in VR was cool, but distracting that we did it in VR, it was more like, okay, this is cool, engaging for people, but at the end of the day, it was not beneficial. The one for the uh, machine learning and, and the multidimensional stuff, I do also have on the machine learning playlist. And I have both the full lecture that I did, which I did as a guest lecture for, for one of the data, and uh, the data mining class. And then I also have just the piece that was in, uh, that was in VR. Actually, I I still have it saved here, so I can like switch to it, but I don't want to switch to it because I can't fast forward. But yeah, I'm gonna click on it and see what happens. Okay, so welcome to VR. So I'm gonna talk to you about the kernel trick, and the idea is. So yeah, that's the video actually. That's cool. I still have that saved. But uh, yeah, you can watch that and on your own time if you'd like. It is pretty cool. Um, but I only did two lectures for that. So I don't have like a whole like semester of those because I only did the guest lectures for a week. So I just did two, two days. And then I have a random machine learning lecture that I did to some of my students that I was doing research with. So I also have that one, but that was just a screen capture before the coronavirus hit and at some point I want to go in and add more lectures that I'm going to eventually teach a data analytics course um, probably a year from now or more so this is like kind of like I will these are sort of going to build up to that at some point I'm assuming by then we'll do it in person but if not then I also want to have an online version of that for like summer and stuff so I might use those for that I don't know, there's some things. Now I'm teaching a cybersecurity course, so I really need to focus on that instead of the uh, data analytics stuff. So I guess we will have to do heaps next time. That's okay. We have planned Wednesday to do them anyways. So, uh, you know, this is peak, peak difficulty. Like I said, recur recurrent relations and AVLGs are the hardest topics that people have a hard time with you know in the test i'm not going to ask you to code a tree i'm just going to ask you to draw the, the nodes so that is a warning though make sure you have a way of drawing the trees if you're using paint or you want to use paper and then scan it i recommend you use tablets or paint because you can copy and paste the thing faster you saw me copying and pasting tons here it's it like saves time for lecture but it also saves you time when you're doing it in the test so like I encourage you to to try that, but if of course we don't all have the means, especially during these times, to be able to buy a tablet or something like that. So if you don't, that's okay. You can use paint, and if not, hand and paper will always be, you know, we can all write hopefully. And if we can't, then you know, we'll, life finds a way, I suppose. So. Um, I lost track of what I was trying to say with that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So so with the test, so so you want to make sure that you that you practice these rotations actually uh, to be able to do them by hand. I think that will help when you code them. You will learn them. Like you'll you'll actually understand them at that point. Like because you have to, otherwise you wouldn't be able to code it. So yeah, yeah. So like you know, I was going to do it on like a review day to show you how you do that. But as a very basic example of that, when we did the Ob one, you know, you do the O. So you do that and then you do like OB 
and then you do like O B I and then that's when you say like uh, right right rotation or you don't need to put the name of the rotation but you have to show then at least what's happening so then you can say like this becomes B O and then that becomes um, B I O like that so that's what you want to show in the test like that the arrows to signify rotations and then you start inserting again. So you go and insert the W. So W would go here. And you don't need to show the height measurements if you don't want to. Um, I encourage you to put them in sometimes because it helps you make sure you're not screwing up. But um, you don't have to, if I guess if you're like that desperate for time, like if you're time crunching this question. That's balance as well. Oh, so then I don't need this. Actually, I shouldn't have put this there. Put a comma. Only put the arrows for rotations. It makes it easy for the TA to like, to like actually follow what you're doing. Remember, they have to be able to understand your rotations because otherwise, like, they uh, they can't grade it. So, yeah. But anyways, yeah, this is kind of what you want to do. Like, you just you just show the rotations as you go, so you don't so that we don't just see like magic happen and you're like TA is like, how did he get this right or whatnot? Plus. The idea being that if you screw up one of these rotations, you only lose partial credit for that. But if everything else is okay after that, then you still get credit. Whereas if you just put like the final tree and it's wrong, then it's like, you know, we can give you some points if some of it is right. But like, you know, we don't see the work. So we don't know if like you just totally screwed it up or if it was just like an accident. Like the typical accident I see with all this tree stuff is like, you draw things in the wrong spots. And I've done that in class too. Like when I was, I'm probably done today or not today, but I think I did it today, but I've done it in the past. So it's very easy when you're time crunching to screw up things like this. So anyways, that's pretty much it. So, you know, hopefully this is enough to get you get with APLs, but if not, then uh, just practice and ask me questions and review day, we can do more APLs, but uh, yeah, that's it. Heaps a lot easier though, heaps of easy. So Wednesday will be easy day, I hope. Definitely better than this. So there's no pointers with heaps too. So no sec faults. So I was looking, I think we have two weeks or three weeks to that. Basically, I want to finish hashing and and, uh, and tree stuff before we get the task. And then we'll have the graph stuff afterwards. So I think about two weeks. I think that's what's on Canvas too. So yes, definitely before uh, Thanksgiving. So yeah. All right then, well, Thanks for thanks for uh, watching the lecture and uh, get your assignments done. Let me know if you guys need more time or anything as the deadlines get closer. But uh, don't don't procrastinate though. Get the assignments done because we kind of ramp up on the assignments. We have what like three assignments due at some point soon, so we're gonna have the fourth one after Wednesday. So yes, but all right then. Have a good day, everybody. Stay safe out there.